Greetings to you from Botswana. I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about church attendance and the importance of church attendance. There seems to be some issues uh, that I keep running into. And in some ways, I think this is kind of secondary, but uh, maybe nothing is secondary because every lie that Satan has, has uh, foisted upon us is for our hurt. So I ask that you would listen to me patiently and uh, I hope that you will be blessed by this. One of the first questions we have to ask is what is church? It seems like it's a, a fundamental question, uh, but the church of the Bible, and this is what we have to go by, the church of the Bible is the body of Christ. They are simply believers. They have repented of their sins. They have been forgiven through the cross of Jesus Christ. They are born again. And so when we think of something like, uh, we're looking at a book of the Bible, say like 1 Corinthians, we'd say these are the believers at Corinth, or they are the body of Christ at Corinth. And I think most people know that. It's talking about people. It's not talking about a building. But it seems that, that in our time, this has become very, very confused because I meet people that are on both sides of the, of the coin in extremes. And when you're talking about church, very simply, they seldom think anything except you're talking about a building or a denomination. They're not talking about the true body of Christ. And so as a result of this, some of the things we see, we see the extremes. If a person is not in church, if they are not going to church, they are considered to be lost because they are not in attendance of a church. Or on the other extreme, what I'm seeing a lot of is simply that everybody who goes to church is a Christian. It's like nobody else can show up at this building. And these things are a little bit ridiculous and they are certainly unbiblical. And so I just like to take some time today to, to go over this. This type of issue actually reminds me a lot of Acts chapter 15 where you have some of the Jews that were believers. They had come to receive uh, Jesus as Savior. They knew he was the Messiah. But they started telling the Gentiles that they had to obey the law of Moses, or they couldn't be saved. In the same way, church attendance has become a type of work to many. Just by showing up, that gains them some type of grace, but it, it really doesn't. Uh, so I just want to go over what uh, the Scripture says. And I just want to let you know that there will be plenty of, of scriptures. There's a lot of scriptures with this. And so I had to put them in the description. I wouldn't have time to go over them in any kind of reasonable video. So please look in the description if you're interested, uh, even for the location of what I talk about. And of course, all scriptures are from the King James Bible. Uh, number one is that God may lead Christians away from church attendance. That could be a part of their service to him. And we see this from scripture. One is the role of the porter or the watchman. I find this in 2 Chronicles uh, 35, chapter 15. I also find it in uh, the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 34. There is a distinction whereby the porter, the watchman, is separate from the brethren. That is their duty. And so in anything else that is going on, their brethren have to take up uh, their cause for them because this is their service. We can also see in Galatians chapter 1, after Paul had come to Christ, he went away into Arabia for three years. He didn't spend time going to a church looking up the other apostles or, or whatnot. He went away to Arabia for three years. So we just have to understand that God may have a reason for his people to go away. And you, so you can't judge them if they say, well, I haven't been attending a church in the past few years. We will do what the Lord leads us to do. Another thing we can see examples is from G Jesus' earthly ministry when he was here in the flesh and not just uh, by the Holy Spirit now, which is absolutely imperative to us. Of course, we see when he was dealing with the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4, he said that you will not worship, you know, the time is now that you will not worship in Jerusalem or in this mountain. 
You will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. God seeks people to worship him in spirit and in truth. He is making it clear that the place is not important. What's going on inside is important. Uh, again, I have links in the description. This is John chapter 4, verses 21 through 24. We can also see in uh, the book of Luke, there is a time his disciples come to Jesus and say, Master, we found one who was casting out devils in your name, but he doesn't travel with us, and so we forbid him from doing it. And Jesus said, Jesus said do not forbid him, because he that is not against us is with us. He's casting out devils in my name but he's not following the group. So we have to trust the Lord that he's going to do his work. Another thing we see from scripture is we have multiple issues, uh, multiple uh, instructions rather, I'm sorry, uh, to separate from those that are not following the Lord aright. Uh, I see this, uh, this is one that I quote all the time from 2 Timothy 3.5 which is that they have a form of godliness that has denied the power from such turn away. We are instructed to turn away. We see this in many places. Uh, I just have, uh, as, as another testimony, in the book of John, chapter 9, Jesus is healing a man that was blind from his birth. And you see it recorded. I mean, the, the Jewish leaders are going to his parents saying, uh, is this your son who you say was born blind? And they say, well, why don't you? Yes, this is our son, and he was born blind, but we don't know how he sees. Uh, why don't you ask him? He is of age. And it says the reason they did this is because they didn't want to be put out of the synagogue. And the synagogue is a form of church. This is what we would take it. And as a matter of fact, in the end, when the blind man was confessing Jesus, they did indeed put the blind man out of the synagogue, but he worshiped the Lord. He worshiped Jesus as the son of God and everything is fine. But there are multiple orders uh, in the New Testament for people to separate when people are not following the doctrine that God has set forth in his word. We see also that there are false teachers. We are warned of false teachers. Uh, we are told to steer away from false teachers. We see this in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, in verses 13 through 15. It says that Satan will appear as an angel of light, and his ministers will appear as ministers of righteousness. Earlier in that chapter, Paul is expressing concerns that if someone comes and they're, and they're preaching another Jesus, another gospel, he is afraid that they might allow them to be there and continue on. And we must not do that. And so we are also warned about false teachers in the church. Then we see what I would say are either devils or contentions in church. I uh, have a number of things under this category. Uh, straight from Mark chapter 1, uh, we see that uh, two times, but especially we'll just say in verse 39, it says that Jesus was going through the synagogues and casting out devils. There are devils in church. It is not just Christians going to church. Satan is bringing his, his servants in there also. And uh, you have to realize this. We also see from Luke chapter 4 that when Jesus was in Galilee, he was in the, his hometown and in the synagogue of his home, that the people of the synagogue rose up and they drove him out to drive him off the cliff and to throw him down. So I hope you see that church is not always the great thing that you might think that it is. Uh, we have to take these things uh, in measure. So here we see also that there is a form of ungodly unity. Uh, often we find church leaders pushing unity above all else. Well, let's be in unity. It's most important to be in unity. But God doesn't push unity. It is only unity in the right spirit, unity in the Holy Spirit. We see that in the end, the world will be united under the Antichrist. And that doesn't mean anything good. When Jesus was being railroaded to the cross, we see in Mark 14, 64, all of the Jewish leaders that were there, uh, supposedly giving Jesus a fair trial, which they didn't do, but all of those leaders condemned him to death. They were in unity. 
but they were certainly not right in what they did. So we have to really diminish uh, the, the idea of unity. Unity has to be right. It has to be in the Holy Spirit. And for that, of course, we are told to test the spirits to see whether or not they are of the Lord. Acts 17, 11 tells us how those of Berea uh, searched the scriptures daily to find out if what they were being told from the apostles was so. They were testing the spirits. They were commended for this. And we should really test the word uh, for this. So I'm only trying to show you that there are some ways in which a person might not attend church. But if they do attend church, it doesn't mean that they are saved. And this is just so much of what I'm seeing. And of late, we have seen many pastors, they are just saying that everyone in their congregation is born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. And this is a lie. It is not even possible, let alone biblical. They can't proclaim this. And uh, we do not want to put this unrighteous work of going to attending a building as being something that is going to earn you points in salvation. And not only that, we see in the last days, the Bible is forecasting that we would there would be a scattered church. That is, the believers of God would be scattered. We see this, uh, I have a number of scriptures that go along with this. I see the one that I have mostly uh, emphasized is from Daniel chapter 12, 6 and 7. And when the thing has come to an end, Daniel is asking, how long will these things go on? When will they come to an end? And it says, when the power of the holy people has been scattered. We see it also in the prophecies of Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Again, the links will be in the description. But we can see then, if we look at the Bible, we read this. One of my favorite portions is from Psalm 119, verses 98 to 100. But I ask you, I urge you to look that up. But I will only, I will only quote more from uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Uh, from 16 and 17, it says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and so that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We don't, we don't need anything beyond the word of God to, to be our standard of what is right and wrong, but we do need the Holy Spirit, which all born-again believers will have as a gift from God says that the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you all things, and is the truth, and is no lie, as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. That's 1 John 2.27. So what we're seeing here is, number one, Christians should follow the Bible, plain and simple. And if you follow the Bible, you're not going to think that church attendance is any issue one way or another. Now, sometimes people like to quote Hebrews 10.25 that says that we should there should not be the forsaking of us gathering together, okay? But that us is Christians. They are believers. And I don't know of any Christian who really uh, advises the forsaking of gathering together with other Christians. But in the churches, the organized churches today, which is what most people talk about with church, that's not what's happening. It's a pollution of the world and the church mixed up together. And so it really doesn't apply. Okay. I also want to just tell you that church is not needed. I'm not discouraging you from going to church. I just say, put God on his throne. Serve the Lord after his word. Okay. But if for some reason you are being led away, don't feel like the blind man's parents. Oh, they're afraid of being put out of the synagogue. They're afraid of being ostracized by their friends. Don't feel that way. If God has led you that way, follow his lead. Follow the lead of the Spirit, and he will take care of you. Because in the end, you know, scripturally, it is a scattered church. So I hope that this has been helpful to you. I pray that the Lord would bless it uh, to your lives. Please look at all the links in the description and take your time. Uh, God bless you.